So I'm just, I'm kind of putting out a bunch of different colors. I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing. Watch out, I don't want to get anybody paint, paint on it. So here's the trick. I didn't bring me with me to compare and I should have. But these are soft body acrylics. A lot of people get the hard, heavy body. They're the ones in the tube. And the problem with them is that they dry out really fast. At the end of my demos, I'll go, and this is after a couple of hours, I'll go, okay, watch this, and I'll have the, the hard body dot of paint, and I'll go, and it won't move. Maybe a little tiny streak of it comes off, and then I'll hit this, and, and it'll smear the whole thing down. They, they're easier to work with. They're more money, and they come in bigger, or the smaller kind. Um, I also use um, airbrush paints, and I'm gonna give you a, 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 a list, I have a, a, a materials list. This is just golden acrylic uh, airbrush paint, and yes, I use it to paint with on a brush. Since you suggested it that day, last semester, I've been using it ever since, and it's the best thing. Yeah. Well, how does it, why do you use it with the brush? It's, a, it um, it's just, all right, here, you ever have a thing where you take a brush and you go, I need to paint a line. And you go, okay, and you go, I'm gonna paint this, and then you go, Wait, I've got to keep. Yeah. Oh, oh God, it's clumping. <laughs> ah, God damn it. You know, and then, you know, you take something like this and you hit, it's just, it's like inking. It's, it's still opaque. It'll still give you, um, but it's like, you can ink. It's amazing. As opposed to regular ink, what's that? Okay. Well, this is FW inks. It's mm -hmm. acrylic paint, but it's water resistant. It doesn't clog. You can use them in pens. You can use them in. Thank God that didn't have water. Um, um, let me let me just go put water in this. So, what's the difference between the acrylic ink and, and using the airbrush as an ink? Airbrush paint and no. FW ink paint are pretty much the same thing. Oh, okay. Um, I just I don't know. I just grab them. When I'm at the store. Okay, so you see the blue lines in there? All my blue lines that I've drawn in there? Well, one of the other rookie mistakes I made when I first started was that I would draw my, when I do a painting, I'd do a drawing and then I'd start painting into it and then I'd lose the lines, which I hate. I'd be like, what? I, eh, I worked on this drawing and it's gone. So once I got out of school, um, I just, I started inking it, and that's just a Sharpie, and it allows you to do this. And I'm putting a ground color, a, a middle ground color. Um, the only time I don't do this is if there's an area that I really, really want to, to, to be seen. Um, and I, this, you can, I can still see everything. I can't see my blue lines anymore though. They're gone. The pencil lines are gone. And it sucks. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so you can also, if I, if I want to, I can make, if I wanted to make things more yellow, I can add yellow, you know, and see what happens there. Um, but again, I'm gonna be able to see it. I can add water too, if I wanted to extend it, you know. And, Kind of tone it. You kind of get some nice stuff going on here. And again, with the um, with the, uh, the sharpie, it doesn't bleed, so my drawing is there. Um, the next phase that I like to do is I like to you know hit my darks. Like if I need some shadows, I got it. So the type of drawing I just did is it, it's the type of drawing I just did is very very like focused on just mouth, nose, eyes. You know, the rest of this can be really expressive. So, I use my acrylic paints like this. Blue, purple, brown, black. That's how I get my dark color. A little bit of black. If anyone says don't use black, well, black will look dead if it's only black. And if you mix it with other colors, it becomes the pigment becomes like something that doesn't. 
So I mix, I pre-mix, and there's two, I have two of these. Oh, that's empty. So I picked the wrong ones. This one is not the wrong one. But I can easily make more. And how do I make more? I just go add a little blue, add a little brown. I usually do equal parts brown and blue. And if I want more of a warm black, I'll put more warm in it, more, more of the brown uh, and the purple. If I want it more cool, I'll put more of the blue. Because black can be, and I have a little bit of black. And then I mix it up. And the end result looks like that. It's a color, uh, and it works. And so I'm just going to use, uh, it's probably hard to work. It's not good. I have different types of brushes, some that are more beat up and are useful in other ways. Um, I should have opened these up, sorry. That's a good one. Um, with my brushes, with respect to them, um, they're all different types. I have a number of different toothbrushes because sometimes I'll, uh, I'll want to keep one for a lighter color and one for a darker color, and this way I don't have to, they don't clean as well. So I just, can you pick that up for me? Thank you. This is what's great about having students. You can ask them to pick things up. <laughs> ask the other two children who look at you like just an outer space. Yes, exactly. Exactly, you know. So um, I want to create a lot of shadow. The light is coming down from the top. It's a zombie. He's probably coming out of a dark hallway. You know, so I usually, this is a good brush. So I can kind of just darken in. And it's almost the exact way I did the other uh, Joker I did the other day. But I'm going to just focus, I'm going to focus a lot of darkness down here so that we can Less going up, more down here. And there's kind of like bits of flesh that are dangling off of him, so um, I'm doing it kind of a regular way. Now this has got to dry. And I should have brought a hair dryer. I always forget. Hair dryer really does. It's it's like my wife is looking for a hair dryer and she comes down in the morning and she's like, "Give me." <laughs> okay, so so different size brushes are key. Different types of brushes are key to doing a painting. If you use like I did in college, this size or this size or this size brush to paint an entire painting that was this big, you're an ass. <laughs> um, you want to do? Uh, you want to pick? Um, an appropriate size brush. This would take forever to get done. So you want to mix, mix it up. Um, I'm going to ink in some of, the, um, some of the other parts on here. Even though I did it with, um, I just want to be able to see it a little better. Things that are going to be completely dark. Just very rudimentary. I'm not, not going crazy. And this kind of, I want to connect these shadows with the background. And again, this is a very kind of abstract looking joker at present. And I'm hoping I can pull it out of this. Tilt it up. You can see a little better. Um, it's just right now. We're getting all this. So uh, all the um, all the browns, all the black lines turned kind of brown. That's fine. That's going to happen. Um, so I'm going to leave that alone, um, and then I'm going to clean my brushes, and I'm going to move on to the next part, which is starting to add all the highlights. Um, I'm going to focus up here so it's not going to, you know, I'll probably get it all over my forearms. <laughs> and my son will be like, what did you do, Daddy? 
should be used to it by now. Yeah, you should, <laughs> should be. Should have taken off your watch. I don't care. <laughs> that watch is good. That gets keep on. Um, no, it's, it's, it's also good to keep keep your water relatively clean. And uh, you know, if you're if you're starting to use lighter colors, you don't want to use uh, dirty water. Um, so. I have to throw paint. Yeah, I get a, I get a, 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 a we call them clients, but, you know, we call them patients, but uh, they come in and they're just like, I want to throw a bowl of paint at the, at the canvas and I have to like ask them like, how hard do you want me to throw it? Underhand, overhand, uh, which colors do I do both at the same time? You know, sometimes they like, they want me to use a ladle to whip it. <laughs> it's like, if I wear nice clothes, I'm dead. So, wear them, so. But I'm envious of them because they have a studio that they can do that. And I can't. My studio is my basement. Mine too. It's like nice, you know. Um, so some of this is taking its time, so I'm gonna speed it up. Get it a little drier faster. It's not gonna hurt it. You know. As long as the main thing is you can still see your, your drawing. Um, okay, so there we go. Now, I don't want to get anybody wet or anything, but you might get splashed, so just understand this is like shannon. Um, so, I'm, right now, I'm going to probably mix in some complementary color, which is like this brown and blue. Keeping it kind of warm for now. Now, I use water for the most part. Also, this this type of airbrush paint it dries shiny, so I could conceivably do the exact same thing, and that's why I didn't bring. I can use blue, purple, brown, and then I'll mix in a little bit of this black, and it's much flatter. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you. the two. And then what you'll get is a much more flatter. You won't get I won't get that sheen. Anyone who's filming this will will get that sheen on the on the board, which you can see it's it's not gonna be as um, when it dries, it dries like I'm extending it with water. It's the only time I'll I'll paint thick like this straight on the board. Because what I like to do is I like to um, use it watery at first and build up my my dark uh, build up my opaques later. The mistake a lot of people do is they start painting and they start um, like for one thing the mistake right now is using this brush to paint a background as opposed to this brush, which <laughs> could do it much simpler and cleaner. And faster. And don't worry about your surface because you don't own it. It's the schools. I'm kidding. I'll clean this up after. Okay. Again, we're going to clean this water. I usually have a bigger uh, jug of water. This is, uh, this is just because I'm traveling. Okay, so um, so now you've got a brown mid tone. You've got your your kind of your darkest dark. Uh, so now the only thing we can do is add our lights. So you just learned a lesson about picking the right brush. So I have a little bit of this paint, and you can mix as, mix as much as you want, um, and you'll get that kind of dark color to work with. Um, it's very formulaic the way I'm working. Um, but I'm also not so formulaic because there's some people have, have 
a much better grasp of color theory. I don't. I actually was laughed out of the class by my students years ago because I didn't. I, I tried to paint a color wheel and I failed really badly. <laughs> okay. Uh, I I really I don't use this one. Anymore. I love this brush. I love these oh angled God, brushes because they enable you to paint in this kind of chunky kind of style. It's my favorite type of brush in the world. I use it for everything. You also want to let a lot of this dry better. And you can see some of the brown is coming up. But it, it's very watery. And yes, you can start to add a lot more water to this. So I'm going to use this, which is a little softer. I feel like it better um, results. I have a question. Sure. When I use illustration board, it curls up on me as soon as I... This will start curling up. All right. When it gets like this, the only thing you can do, see how nice this is? I can get a nice sharp edge with this, and yet I can do a broad stroke with it. So the rule is, as you can see here, the board is the board is a lot of water, so I can take pure paint if I wanted to and put it in there because the paint now blends with the water. But if it's dry, it'll get thick and gummy. There's still water in this, but if I picked up pure paint down here where it's dry, then it would be kind of bad. I I'm telling you, the right brush makes the difference in the job. So what do you do when the illustration board starts to curl? No, you just deal with it. But then after it, you get it done, you can mount it to foam core. Oh. And the foam core will strengthen it up and build it up. So I will, I will pass this around as I go. Okay, so I know I need to brighten this area up in here. I'm just going to just kind of blast through this. I'm going to do the hair later. Um, So if, I, if I'm feeling like i got to do something and the brush that I'm working with might be a little clumsy, I might pick up something else. This is a brand new brush. I should really don't usually do this. It's also better not to do it. So this is the top of his nose. So, I needed a, so that's a little too th uh, thick for me, the paint. So I'm going to thin it out. Are you still picking up more brown than you would normally like? Uh, yeah, probably. Okay. Um, it's just I didn't let it dry long. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting the, the, this top part here. Okay, so the, so the, the whatchamacallit, the soft body is really helping kind of keep it, you know, moving. And I just created an edge to these muscles right here in the forehead. Um, And you can see, because I'm using it more thin, you get like, you don't, the paint isn't flat. And that helps you because then you can kind of start going into it and adding more brighter parts. Like the top of this would be brighter, you know. And I want the skin to eventually become like kind of white. Because the Joker has that kind of pale. So right now, I know you're like, I can't see it yet. Well, you know something? I can't either. <laughs> I'm still working this out. So it'll get there. As soon as I get the teeth in, you'll be like, oh, let's see. And you see how wet it remains? It's, don't, don't, you don't want to use, I, I just, I hate that. The hard body stuff is good for one thing. If you, if you want to build up like some sort of a texture, an actual like texture on the board, really good for that. Very happy I chose to do this today. I have what? to do a painting when I go home. Do you really? Mm -hmm. ah. So this, uh, this is helping me. Good. So, getting into the rest of the mouth now. Okay, 
So this, that type of brush is not helping um, unless I go back up into this area right here. Like going and making the rest of the chin and everything isn't going to be uh, very good. Plus, look what happens when you, um, it gets streaky. So if I do this, it's nice and smooth and it's more shape driven. Um, it's not so like, you know, just uh, lots of little tiny brush strokes. You can actually focus more. And the brown is now mixing with, with the paint. And maybe in more, less ways than I want, but what the brown does is it makes everything look, you ever see like how brothers and sisters have a family resemblance? Well, paint, when it when it's, doesn't have a family resemblance, it's like, for example, okay, let me backtrack here. If you do a painting and you start with a white canvas and you have warm and cool colors, you don't, and you're not planning those warm and cool colors out and you're just kind of randomly picking them up for their like value, not their color. You are going to get colors that are fighting each other because you don't know which one. Um, uh, you, you know, you're going to have warms and cools next to each other, which doesn't normally happen. So by doing this, the brown is actually making everything warm. It's on the teeth now. I'm going to focus on the teeth. By the way, using a brand spanking new brush like this is not recommended. Um, mixing colors on the board beats the shit out of me. Um, I'd rather just use this one, which is bad. And I can push it as much as I want. Now, I'm not going to white because I don't want it, not at first. Lighting is terrible in this room, by the way. And I'm kind of just, what? Kind of in its transparent state, I'm going to block in these teeth. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I got to do this. <laughs> Can't see what I'm painting. I had to bring in one of those giant wood boxes with the the what's it called the easel on it. Yeah. Because I couldn't paint here last semester. I had to bring in this heavy thing. How much are those? I got mine for free, luckily, but those are like eighty dollars and up, and it's stupid because they're six. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the things that happens with paint, I don't know, I'm just gonna pass this around for now. Let's take a look mm -hmm. at it. So now I'm gonna work on the. See how like. Very even even though this is you know, using browns and stuff. I don't know, just to get this dark. There is a deep shadow here, but you're not going to be seeing it first. And this type of painting is going to require like texture and. Um, Right now, I'm really just painting very, like, loosely. I'm not thinking about what I'm doing. Skin coming off. Um, okay. So you start seeing more of the face. <laughs> So this is, this is just airbrush paint, or, or FW inks, and I'm inking in the lips. Now, as bright as they are, they probably won't stay that bright. Because it's kind of transparent. This is 
lip is kind of torn off. Um, I'm using pink for the gums, and it's probably not good. So it would probably, it'd probably be like black. The gums would be black. He's so diseased and stuff. So, but I'll put down a little just to kind of see what it looks like. Fill it in a little bit. And there's still a lot of water on the paint, so just please bear that in mind. Um, you can even finger paint too. Okay. You're starting to. Why did you choose to use um, illustration board? Um, it's what I've used my whole life, pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, I'm gonna block this in. So now I'm using this paint and you know, going over the brown and I'm thinking to myself, why would I make that a shadow? Well, it, it kind of already is a shadow and the brown is too jarring so I'm gonna go over it with that kind of tone right there. And what's gonna happen is you can, you can really, I'm, and I'm gonna just go crazy on this because I'm just gonna, um, doing these thick, thick kind of chunky um, shapes. All this can be refined later if you really want to get into some fine, fine lines and stuff like that. Um, everything is kind of not um, set in stone. So you're starting to see the face come out. And it's important to understand the lighting. Um, So when it's wet, if I put a big kind of chunk of, of this paint down, I'm gonna use water to kind of soften it, soften the edges. So now it's just watery paint and I'm kind of extending it out. And I'm using the brush to kind of give me some interesting shapes. Um, see how bright I can go. Because I'm gonna, I often splatter too. And this is really good, because look, I'm getting that finger texture and stuff yeah. going down there. Um, So I'm painting way more thick than I want to because I really don't have a lot of time. I do this much, much more slower, much more slow than me. Grammar at his painting demonstration. That's not what I wanted. So, um, okay, so. Hmm. If you want to warm something up, sometimes you can use a glaze, sometimes you can... Okay, sometimes you use a toothbrush. Yep, that would be smart. Toothbrushes are great, it just toned that white down, made it warm, made everything kind of warm. And also, What I like also is it, 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 it'll take, I'll take some red, because I want some red. 
give it some kind of texture. It's great for blood if you want blood. Um, there's an eyeball here. I've got to paint that right now. And it is going to mix. The, the, everything's going to mix. Um, okay, so you see I did a really thick blob of paint. And now I use more water. Kind of spread it around. And that will make it not so bright. And it'll, and it'll give you a lot more room. Like you even have room for like, you know, like a highlight, you know. Um, so it's important not to get too bright too fast, like, like that. So by keeping your paint a little more watery, and I'm going to pass this around in a few minutes. So. Now some shadows are are deeper than others, or darker than others. Uh, my old teacher used to call them areas of less light. So in areas of less light, you, you don't want to have any you know, pitch black, you know. So, but with the mouth, it's all pretty deep. So I'm just gonna, kind of, and you can play with it. You can make, make the teeth look broken. Same thing with like this. You can bring shadows back. Um, kind of bring things up. Um, even in even in stuff like this, I can I can sit there and make wrinkles again because um, I'm going to be painting over this. I don't like the shape of the nose or you know, these holes in the nose. I can just kind of. Re redefine them. And I like doing it with the, with the pencil because the pencil is erasable. I can go in and erase this if I really wanted to. And some of it may not come up, but some, most of it will. And I'm trying to make big shapes that I can kind of hang my hat on here. It's easy for the eye to, 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 to look at. Um, it's a little... Kind of, it's kind of oversimplified when you do this kind of line work. So I'm, I'm trying not to do too much of it. But, you know, you can, you can then just kind of like take your, your brush and, you know, you can take you know, this tone here and just go over things. And, you know, it's still there and you can still see it. Um, it makes cool stuff happen. You know, the black, the dark black is still there that I did. And you can go in and... So it's, it's almost like wrestling. You like wrestle with your paint. Wrestling with your painting. You know, like, take that! And it comes back, take that! You know, like, ah! It's kind of crazy. Mm. This, the brush is too fat for that area, so I'm going to go back in there. There we go. Is there one up there? No, this is it. So when I do stuff like this, which seems like destructive, it's just, it's part of the creation process. Mm -hmm. Because you're you're going to get things that happen in this that you wouldn't normally get if you painted it so cleanly and perfectly. And like, oh, you just went over all that white that you uh, the black marks that you just went through and created. I'm like, I know, I know, but um, I'm going to retain slight changes, slight pieces of every step that I do, pretty much. Some of them. And these teeth are so irregular, it's great. And you can play and have fun. 
Um, so if you see like an interesting shape, you might kind of like sharpen it up or And his kind of mouth is kind of drooling. So if I like the way it looks, I'll, I'll, if I see how it looks, I can kind of do it in pencil first. And, hmm. So every time something happens, uh, it may or may not stay, you know, um, we could, I can still see because I kind of carved. Okay. So by using watery paint now, I can recapture those teeth. This is watery paint. It's just, there's the edge of the gum line, you know, I want to, if I don't want it completely there. Um, so it's really, like I said, it's a kind of like a little bit of a battle. Um, So with um, the, the interesting thing with gory areas is that you don't have to, when you paint, highlights. You see I was trying to get snapping kind of highlights on the, on the teeth? Well, the irony is, is that if you, if you go paint highlights over a dark area, like, the, like this lip, they, it really stands out. Like it makes the, the, the lip look way, way more um, shiny because it's so dark. You know, the highlight will stand out on that. Um, so that's the, you know, if I go up here and I put a highlight there, it's not as shiny as it is down there. So you can see the dots and stuff have gone away here because I'm really painting much thicker paint right here. And I'm letting all this kind of color change happen. Especially as a zombie, you know, you could be like, you could really kind of have fun with him. Um, I want the top of his nose here to be really bright, but not square like that. Any questions? Um, it's getting there. I mean, you're still thinking like you're, you're kind of like 
blocking in shapes, right? Because you left your kind of outline. The original drawing is just kind of floating within outside of the shapes. Like you're putting a block, 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 and then because your original drawing, the line is still there, and you're thinking of that later on to go back in and oh, yeah, define. Oh yeah, I mean my my sharpie drawing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, sharpie drawing's gone now, and so I could, you know, I I have to like go back in and um, like this is just too thick. I, I'm really annoyed with this. <laughs> Pissing me off. Okay, I'll I'll get back into it and bring that the break back up. But I'm gonna let it dry and work on another area. So, um, I want to make the shadow of that um, this flesh being kind of dripped down. Okay, so one thing you can do is you can do glazes. So I have this brown. I want to darken. I'm going to darken down by that lip. So I'm going to put, um, not that. Um, let's, I'm going to use this airbrush paint that I have. Just a little dab right here. And then I want to you know, create a shadow here showing the edge of the lip. And there it is. So you can glaze an area in right here. That's just watery, you know, this, this paint, this watery paint. And slowly but surely, he gets to, you know, he gets to be a little bit more three-dimensional. It takes time. But the, right now, the teeth are kind of a focal point. Um, and I'm wondering, based upon this, if maybe not having this so bright up here would be kind of good. Even like on your Marvel masterpieces cards and stuff, you'd going in there with your fingers and or no, depend, not no then. this is more for this just is, like this a, is more current. Okay, this is this is something I've I've picked up on later. Um, so what I'm thinking is maybe bringing the light down just around the eye and keeping this dark over here. But you can. What I like about like when it's dry, you can actually, I can actually make some of the the hair. When that Joker's hair kind of is kind of grown really long, and I'm spinning the pencil while I do it, that gives me like a randomness. And it adds a different texture to the piece. So. Add some other colors in there just to kind of spice it up. Again, um, this is it's like a Joker Eddie. Yeah. From Iron Maiden. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder. This is really going to have to be reworked because it's just it doesn't have any detail in there. Um, so. Um, I'm going to see if I brought any other dark pencils. I didn't bring a dark pencil other than that blue, so that black. So I'm going to see if maybe this green will help. No. Sometimes a dark brown will help. So you can, I can re-up my line here. Now this paint is getting a little thick right up here. It doesn't take the pencil as well because I've been smearing it with my hand and stuff. Can I feel it? Yeah. It's a weird cool. question, but I really yeah, agree. Yeah, I agree, yeah. I love texture like that. It's so cool.
Well, I'll do another paint demo and I'll show you like texture, like how to paint like a textured wall, like a cracked and broken wall. You can paint every class, I'd be so <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't want to make it, I, I just, I'm concerned. I didn't want to like make it like not about cartooning, but I mean, this is cartooning. It's this just is, painted cartooning. It's very important because our other, other classes don't teach us like this. Okay. So you can draw, I'm drawing in like, Shadows. I don't know what that is, why that's there. Is there an eraser somewhere around here? Uh, yeah. Yes, it's my, my vanish eraser. I actually endorse this. A few uh, celebrity endorsements. <laughs> celebrity endorsements. I actually got, but I did get contacted by a lady I know who worked for the company. And, and I love it. I mean, I'm, I'm literally, I'm, it's like I, didn't, I would never tell anybody to buy something, but I actually love that eraser. It really works well. I don't know who makes it. How bad is Messy? that? Messy? <laughs> I've never seen one. Can you say they only sell them in New Jersey? I'm not sure where they sell them. So I've never seen them. What is this? It's four and one. What are the four and ones? You're asking a guy who just rubs <laughs> it on a board and doesn't really know what it does. <laughs> <laughs> just slap my name on it. But I really, I mean, I definitely love it, you know. Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm now kind of adding stuff in here. Uh, it might be crude, it might be black, but I'm re-figuring out what's going on with this whole thing. Maybe some wrinkles, which I can go in and I can, I can um, play with. What, what happens is, do you remember when I was painting digitally, I went and I was trying to always get rid of the black lines until it was a painted, until it looked really fully painted. And that's what I'm gonna do. I, I just, in some places, you wanna have a deep, deep shadow. Like um, the other Joker painting that's kicking around here, I think they're over there. Can you grab that tall, long one? This is a Joker painting I did for Syracuse University. And very similar, using the same lighting scheme, using all the same things. He's just not dead. It's before he was bitten. Uh, and you can see how the, the highlights kind of pick up on the darker um, skin. This is, remember this, because when you want gore, <laughs> if you paint, paint like a nice healthy pink, um, you know, organ or whatever, and you put your highlights in there, it's not gonna shine as much as if it's dull, darker, and then you hit it. Um, but you see how the shape is, this dark shape? It's really nice to have a good graphic shape. That's the shadow of the, um, the lip on the chin. So, uh, you know, and here, I didn't paint the shadow on the nose. I painted around the shadow on the nose. That's diff, like people say, oh, no, I didn't paint mix up brown. The brown was already there. All these shadows are already there. I'm painting all the highlights. <laughs> And this is the thickest part of the paint that I have on the, and right up here. Yeah, yeah. Pass it around. You can hold it. You okay. work photographs really well. What? You work photographs really well. Good. Well, you know what it is? I think it's contrast. Yeah. You know, I'm a high contrast. Like Simon Bisley is another artist whose work is really high contrast, but he uses a lot of dark black shapes in his mm -hmm. paint. Um, th again, like I'm telling you what I do. I'm not telling you the thing to do. Yeah. But. You know, you'll find find what works for you in, in by doing by by doing a lot, and then you know. For me, this works, but God, I think it would benefit from watching other artists work. I love watching people paint. Always good to cap things. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me on that. And every night, I gotta tear this off, throw it away, because I got a cat. It's <laughs> really a gremlin. <laughs> he likes to walk through my paint. You know, it's funny, you, yeah, the your floor. palette is so sunny, but the picture is so dark. It's interesting. I know. <laughs> but that's me. I always make things dark. <laughs>